I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we are taking a look at NGROC and how to expose some service that we have running on a port on our local computer to the internet. For example, in my latest episode, we created a web application running on Streamlit, which was on port 8501 on our local computer that connected to a Microsoft Access database, and we wanted to expose that to the internet. And while I gave a short explanation in that video, this video is for those of you who are looking for maybe more than one way of installing NGROC and using it, and that's what this video is for, is to give you a couple of different options. One is using Python, one is running it on Docker, and we'll take a look at both of those. Let's get to it. Need more resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description. Okay guys, this is a pretty fun one today. You're gonna to need to start your command window and uh, we are going to do a pip install. Now, if you checked my previous two episodes, uh, we did do this installation of Python and so we're assuming that you've got that, but you're going to do a pip install py ngrok, and that's a Python wrapper for ngrok that can allow you to use that functionality, and it's very, very useful. That's all you need to do in order to get it, is just run that little uh, command there, and then you've got it in your Python environment, and then you are free to go ahead and try it out. Now there are a million different ways you can use this. Node.js runs on one port. You know, Flask runs on another port. Local AI runs on port 8080. Uh, you know, in this case, we're using Streamlit and that runs on port 8501. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm navigating to a directory where I had an access database and a small Streamlit application that connects to it. And we wanna run our Streamlit application locally so that we can see it. And then we're going to do our ngrok installation and we're gonna run ngrok to connect to it to expose it to the internet. So this is what our application looks like. You can see, uh, you know, port 8501 at the top there. And that is our little application that we built that is in Streamlit and it connects to Microsoft Access. And uh, you can see we've got our drop-down lists that have been loaded from the database and it's running on that port. And so we want to expose this little application to the internet. And uh, in this case, we're going to use another command window. So we're going to need another one of those. You can see Streamlit is running in this command window and we need another one in order to run ngrok. But first, what we're going to do is we'll take a look at our Notepad++ or whatever editor you want. If it's, uh, you can use Visual, Visual Studio.code or something. And you can see those are the two scripts that we have done in our previous two episodes. And we are making a third script and we'll use that language menu and we'll choose Python after we've clicked new. And that's gonna give us a Python script that we can start to populate here. And from there, we're going to do uh, from py and grok import and grok. And that's gonna give us access to all of, all of that functionality, which is great. And uh, we don't really need a lot for this script. It's a very short script in order to get ngrok running. Uh, we'll set our authorization token. Now that's the token you're gonna get after you've logged in to ngrok.com and made your account and you'll be able to get your key, an authorization token. You can create one and you can also uh, delete them and, and use new ones if you want. I created this one and I'll delete it right after making this video and make a different one for projects that I'm running. Uh, but here we go, we can use our HTTP tunnel. So we're gonna load that variable with ngrok.connect and we're gonna use that port 8501, which is the Streamlit application that's on our computer that I just demonstrated for you. And so what ngrok is gonna do, it's gonna connect port, port 80 and 443, I think. Yeah, to that 8501 and so basically it allows you to have you know an HTTPS uh, application running so it is secured um, out on the internet and so we're, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to print the public URL because we need that because when we are using the free version of ngrok it's going to make a new public uh, URL every single time okay let's save this I'm just going to save this as uh, st uh, ngrok start, I'll call it. This is gonna be our, our start 
uh, Python script so that we can start ngrok. And uh, that's really uh, all that we do there is, uh, so it's gonna start that service and then it's gonna print off the public URL which we need in order to do this. Now, we want it to stay open for a certain amount of time or you can, you can do something like uh, make it wait for an input, you know, an input, uh, text input from Python in order to keep it running. Uh, you just need to keep the script running. In this case, I'm gonna import time at the top and then I'm gonna go sleep uh, you know, 300 seconds, which will be five minutes. And, uh, and that's going to give us a sort of like a tunnel that opens, and it's going to point directly to that port 8501, which is our streamlet application. And then when it's done, it's going to print exiting, and then it will shut down and it won't be available anymore. Now, if you want your script to continue, uh, but you want to shut down the tunnel, you can also do things like HTTP tunnel dot disconnect and then you can also do a kill command. You should research those on on the Pi and Grok site. Uh, those are also available to you if you want to shut down the tunnel for some reason, but keep your you know keep your script running. Okay, so we're gonna go into our directory here. We're gonna use a, another command window and uh, we'll just start our uh, Python script. So we'll say stngrok start and you can see it prints off our ephemeral URL which is auto generated and it's different the next time that you run it so you get a different one every time that you run it you can configure ngrok uh, to use a static one I think you get one free uh, with with your free account and you if of course if you pay more then you can get uh, additional um, addresses and static addresses and things like that so let's go ahead and plunk that into our remote computer, which is out on the internet, and that's looking into my network. And you can see if I put that address in there, I get a little warning before it opens our page, and that can also be configured. And now I have this Streamlit app that's connected to Microsoft Access, and I can use it. So I can put in a name and you know, you know, an address and postal code. And so we can use this web application you know just like we used it in our local network and in this case that is connected to our Microsoft Access database on the back end and that is something that is really cool so let's hit save there and you can see it says you have been added and that's using that free address that we got from ngrok and you can see it's still running in the background there which is really awesome it's gonna run for five minutes and I will elapse the time here so that you do not have to wait for the rest of the five minutes but we'll see here it should go exiting in a moment there we go and now it has exited and closed that tunnel and it's no longer running on my network here um, so i can actually go back to that remote computer which is out on the internet and i can you know put in that address again and if i hit you know hit go there we go you can see it says you know tunnel is not found if you're the developer, you know, get help, uh, you know, uh, but we know that it's not running at all. So that tunnel is not running and we are done. Okay, so our next method is using Docker and we're going to run a command script for Docker. Um, Docker has lots of advantages. You can go to the site, download it, install it. Uh, you'll get a, an install file that looks kind of like that. You can install it with the default parameters or you can use more advanced ones. Docker is so useful for running a bewildering array of things uh, on your machine that come completely pre-configured. And so it's going to do everything that you see in this script here, um, and it's going to allow us to, you know, to run our app. We've got that one running in there. Uh, we can avoid creating that you know, Python script by just having it run in what's called a container. And in order to do that, we're going to make a Windows command file, or you can do a PowerShell uh, file, or you can even do a .bat file, I think. Uh, one of those will do. I'll do a .cmd file, so I'm going to start typing there uh, my command. I'm putting a remark at the top, and I'll save this. Uh, I'll just save this file um, as our run ngrok uh, file here. So I'll put .cmd on the end. Uh, so make sure you save it as a .cmd or .bat or, 
or .ps1 if you're doing uh, your PowerShell. Um, but in this case, I'm just doing a Windows command uh, file, so we'll, we'll go ahead and use that. So all you have to do to run your Docker once you've downloaded uh, Docker and got it and started on your machine, we'll show that in a minute, is that you just do one line. It's like, you know, docker run dash it, which gives us an interactive uh, container. And uh, we use the E for our environment variables there. So we'll put our ngrok auth token and then you'll paste in, you know, equals our token. That's the one that you'll get from the ngrok site. And then we're going to put ngrok slash ngrok and then the latest tag on it. And that's going to get us the latest, uh, you know, ngrok docker um, container or image that we can use from from the uh, Docker site there. And so then we'll add the argument uh, for where we want it to go. So you could your your environment might be 192.168.244 and you know dot whatever or it might be 10. Dot, you know 0. 0. Dot whatever um, or it could be 55 uh, whatever it is and then you want to put that uh, colon port number on the end. Uh, which is uh, going to give us that. So there's our arguments. We've got our token in there. We've got our address that we want to forward to and our tunnel to, and we are good to go. So let's go ahead and save that. Of course, you'll customize that line to fit your environment. And uh, I will uh, put mine in there. So there we go. So we can be ready to run our script. Now, the shortcut for Docker Desktop will be put on your desktop. Uh, when you install Docker and it's going to start in its own window. It won't really have anything running or anything in that window. Um, and uh, in order to start that, uh, we're actually going to run it from the command line using the little command script that we created. And we can run it just by double clicking on that. And another window will pop up in the console. And you'll see that ngrok kind of comes to life in the console there. And it's sort of just running in the background. And it'll even give some feedback here in a moment. It should start to give us, there we go, our latency to the server. And another thing it gives us is the forwarding address. And that's our ephemeral address in this case, which it changes every time we start it. Uh, but we have this internet address that points to our app. So we can pull up our browser, control V to paste it in there. And there is the sort of placeholder site and with a warning and we can click visit site in order to go to our app that's running on our computer we can configure that uh, warning and remove it uh, if we're going into production and there's lots of options there but there is our ngrok running in the window there it gives us a lot more information than the python method of running this and it also seems to have less interaction with our antivirus which makes it a bit easier for us to run and that's how you can expose your app on the internet using ngrok. Want to buy me a coffee? Just click that super thanks just below the video window.